Yo guys, so today we are dealing with dialogue pop-up box system uh, which you can use and you can tweak to, to your needs in your project, in your game. So let's see quickly what the effect will be achieving today. So as we have the game played, here we have the, uh, the actual game. When you approach a guy, press space bar, a dialog box appears with a custom text and here we have a button we press the button to close the dialog and if we go to uh, to the settings of this particular pop-up uh, system trigger you can type anything you want uh, I type you're awesome big time but it can be really really anything right and Right now, wait for it. Right now, the the effect will be will be the same. And thing uh, that that lacks in it. Hello guys, it's Ian here, and welcome to Clipper Game Dev Channel. Today we are doing this pop-up system, uh, which will spawn a dialog box, a pop-up type dialog box, with custom text. So we start with a generic uh, script, c -sharp script, we call it pop-up system. We get rid of those two generic functions because they are uh, useless for, for our purpose. What we have to do, we have to go and we'll need three things to, to run our uh, dialog pop-up system. First will be the object game object pop-up uh, box which will be the, the generic object of this of this pop-up system uh, then we need uh, a reference to animator animator of our pop-up because all the uh, we need a reference to the animator of the pop-up system because we'll be using animation and triggers in order to handle the behavior and we'll need some generic text let's go with text mesh pro pop-up text we have to import text mesh pro obviously and then we go we need really only one function which will be public void let's call it pop-up go string text so it will be the the text uh, you pass to the pop-up first we will set the pop-up box to be active so we go set active true then we set the text of the pop-up to be the text we passed in the function and then we go with the animator and we set trigger we set trigger pop and right now when it comes to coding that's all we need right now we have to just um, make animations for the pop-up box and make the pop-up box itself so let's hop to the unity I'm working on my own small large medium sized uh, game dev project here I attach the pop-up system script to the game manager object uh, as we can see uh, we'll have to uh, add links to those three objects in a moment so let's go to to the pop-up box itself so I already uh, created a generic object for this pop-up system where I made a um, just a normal image okay I have uh, I have one image that is being scaled this way which is which works fine for me but um, if you have some other sprite you can use none sprite at all if you want if you don't have anything but I suggest you you use uh, or download or make yourself some asset to, to make it look cool then we create a text mesh pro uh, object and we put it as a child to the object. Uh, remember to to make the borders of the text mesh pro 
so that uh, it fits the the box itself well. And the last thing is to make a button. And uh, once again, I've chosen one of my own graphics. Um, you can choose whatever you like. You can use those graphics as well. I will upload them at some time in the future. Okay, so right now, uh, as I already explained how to make this uh, pop-up box itself, let's animate it. So we, first of all, we have to we choose the parent object of the pop-up box, and we go into animation tab and we create first animation. We'll call it. Let's put it to some folder pop up box. So we go to this folder. We call it idle. The first one will be idle. Uh, an animator component with uh, with a linked controller is already added to the object, which is very nice. So as a state of idle, we go to record. I want it to be always hidden. So we go with width and height of the parent object. We make them zero. Then we go to the button. We put the width and height to zero as well. And we go to Text Mesh Pro text and we change the font size to zero. Do not change the width and height because look what happens with the text. It starts to behave strangely because it's somehow... Uh, there's this wrapping and overflow settings uh, which you can't do uh, much about. So let's go and just change the font to zero. And that's the first animation. So we go create a new one. We call it called pop. Okay, so uh, we smash the record button and what we do, we begin, since it's a pop animation, we begin with uh, our, sorry, we begin with our box being completely collapsed. So we set all the dimensions, all the important dimensions, we set them to zero and then we go to, I don't know, past 20 milliseconds and we return them to the previous glory which was what I have no idea oh yeah it was it was 600 by 300 here and uh, the text was 30 See, obviously you can use your own values but you know I want to stick to, to mine. You can also do some kind of weird crap with animating like floating button or whatever. But let's stick with it. Okay, that was the pop. And let's go and make a close one as the final piece of the puzzle. We smash the record button. Now it's uh, quite easier because we have to just, uh, for example, delete one digit in order to mark it as uh, as changed, although nothing changes because we type 36 instead of 36, but it's already marked as uh, being animated, which is very uh, cool feature, I guess. Uh, okay, and then we go to, we pass 20 milliseconds and we return with everything set to zero. Ram -pam 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 -pam. Yep. Oh, bullcrap. We go to record once again and we smash the button to pieces. Fine, let's check everything. So, it closes. Well, as you can see there is some f weird crap going on here. The font is being Oh yeah, we have to, sorry, we have to diminish the rec transform of the of the text mesh pro as well, 2, 5, 3, nothing changes, but at the very end it goes to 0, 0, yep, so that now everything is being scaled to a complete disappearance of the pop-up box and with pop we go the same way 
cut right now will mark doses. Change although it's the same value and here we smash with 0 and 0. Okay, so the pop is... The pop is already done. Yep. And the close is done as well. And the idle is, you know, it's nothing. One more important thing is we have to go to those three animations and uncheck loop time because otherwise there will be looping and we do not want any looping at all. We don't want any looping at all. We go to the pop-up box, we go to the animator and right now we... oh crap. We got those three states. Uh, idle is the entry one, of course. Then we have we've got pop and close. We have to make those two triggers, pop and close, we've used before, and we make some connections. So we want the pop-up box to behave uh, to change states following this triangular triangular pattern. So first from idle, so from close, we go to pop which is being triggered by the pop trigger. Uh, we don't want any exit time and any fixed duration. So uh, we reset those values like this. Then we go from pop to close. We put the other condition, pop close. And right now we put exit time one, but transition zero. So Right now we are sure that the animation of the pop will be displayed fully be before uh, it's being closed. If you press the button during mid-animation or something. Of course you can change it uh, if you want, but I want to, to make it this way. Okay, so we go with exit time one, uh, one second. Uh, yeah, and generally that's it. The only thing left is to go to our pop-up system script and uh, drag and drop the pop-up box, so the generic game object. Once again, the animator is the is connected to the generic object, so we uh, once again put it here. And pop-up text, we put this text mesh pro object. But when we have the button. Let's go to the onClick method and let's add the pop-up box itself and let's go to animator and set trigger with string and we put close. That's it. So anytime you put you press the close button, so generally this button, right? It will be close because it will set the trigger to close. So what we want to do? Uh, I have this um, Scene when there is a generic NPC, it will give you an item and uh... Moment! So we go to the uh, some piece of script we want and Here we have to add only those two kinds of lines of code, right? Where pop-up is a string yeah, which will we uh, which will define which we define here. However, we can put any value uh, in the editor in the inspector itself. Okay, so we have to create a new object, reference object of uh, the pop-up system. We go game object, find game object with tag. We pre uh, put game manager uh, in the context of my game. We get the component of the pop-up system and we assign it to this new created pop object. And then we just go and launch the method popup, which we, as you remember, created as a public void. And we pass the string, and the string is the popup. Yep. So let's go once again to, to this one. Here we have popup. You are an awesome big time, okay? So let's change it to see that it's working. It is working. And when we go to the game mode. Okay, so we approach the, the, the guy, the knight, yeah, and we press spacebar because uh, that's how the interaction with this NPC works. That's that's how it's working in my game. 
but the pop-up is appearing, which is great. And we press the button and it's being closed once again, once again, once again, once again. Okay, so as you can see, it's a kind of, it is very easy to do that. As you can see, it is very easy to do this kind of system uh, and the limitations are, there are no limitations to implementation. You can also assign what function should be called when you press the this button and you can assign it in the script itself. If you want to know anything about it, let me know. I will include it in some other video. But for the time being, thanks for watching and remember to always like, heart, subscribe and hug all of my videos. See you guys. Cheers.